In my experience, I haven't found women to be more emotional than men. However, I have noticed that leaders who are overly passionate can make significant mistakes. This was evident when biographer Robert Caro and his wife Ina researched the American West. They observed that the male experience dominated the narratives, neglecting the stories of women's struggles and virtues. Stoicism too often focuses on male figures like Marcus Aurelius and Seneca, but there were many female Stoics whose wisdom is equally valuable. Hello everyone, welcome to Stoics Every Day. Today we will talk about the valuable Stoic insights from the inspiring women you meet in life and I believe their perspectives can be transformative for all. 1. Be Confident in Aristotle's discussions, confidence is seen as the opposite of fear. According to Stoic philosophy, caution or confidence is the ability to avoid bringing harm upon oneself by committing injustices. A Stoic person will stay away from such wrongdoings and trust in their capability to steer clear of them. Essentially, confidence is considered a habitual practice. One can cultivate this habit by acting as if they already possess the level of confidence they desire. Personally, I have applied this approach in my teenage years with great success. It involves pretending to be confident until it becomes a natural part of you, a strategy rooted in philosophy. If you feel less confident than you wish, try pretending to be supremely confident for 30 days. Epictetus believed that one month is the time frame needed for new behaviors to become ingrained in us. 2. Beware of passion. Eleanor Roosevelt once rejected being described as passionate when thanked for her support on legislation. Stoics warn against being consumed by emotions like anger, excitement, or enthusiasm. In my experience, I haven't found women to be more emotional than men, but rather, leaders are often not passionate. Passion can be a hindrance for leaders, as seen with George Bush's fervor for invading Iraq. The Stoics advocate for stripping out passion, approaching things calmly, clearly, and objectively. It's important to care and take action but being driven by passion can cloud judgment. Eleanor Roosevelt's advice was to be different, not labeled as passionate. 3. Don't worry about what other people think of you if you are doing the right thing. Badass women believe that actions aligning with human virtue are virtuous, even if they are unpopular. He exemplified this by supporting the Republic, despite the risks. We can also apply this principle in our lives by prioritizing what is right over what is easy or popular. Opinions of others shouldn't deter us from making ethical choices, as we cannot control their thoughts. 4. Be prepared for the call. Florence Nightingale was 16 years old when she first felt a call into nursing, specifically to help wounded veterans. Initially hesitant due to her parents' disapproval, she waited for eight years before embracing the call. Despite further delays, she eventually found the courage to pursue nursing. After 16 years of hesitation, she finally answered the call and revolutionized nursing in the Crimea. The message is clear, we all receive a call to fulfill our purpose but the question is whether we will have the bravery to answer it and not let obstacles hinder us from becoming who we are meant to be. 5. Be brave. Cicero believed courage was a virtue, similar to Aristotle and the Stoics. He struggled with handling changes in his life, especially when faced with exile, the death of his daughter, and withdrawal from public life. Despite these challenges, he remained hopeful for the restoration of the Roman Republic. Cicero's life was marked by various ups and downs, 
but he faced them courageously, even in his final moments. Like Cicero, the badass women also admit to struggling with change, but acknowledges that change is an inherent part of life. They encourage his striving for Cicero's example of courage in adversity, even when it is personally difficult. 6. Be true to yourself. Let me share a story about Margaret Thatcher from the book Courage is Calling. There's this young woman named Colin who aspires to be a chemist. During a job interview at a big company, she notices the interviewer's notes saying she is too difficult to work with. This kind of criticism can be demoralizing and make you question yourself. That's why courage is important. We must have the courage to stay true to ourselves, not letting external factors sway us. Just like Agrippinus, an early Stoic philosopher, who wanted to stand out like a red thread in a garment and not blend in with the crowd. You too should have the courage to be authentic and not succumb to societal pressures or norms that go against who you really are. 7. Don't give up hope. Cicero's daughter, Tullia, passed away unexpectedly while she was still young. Despite trying various philosophical techniques, Cicero initially struggled with grief. To cope, he wrote the consolation to himself. After Tullia's death, he immersed himself in work, translating Greek philosophy into Latin and creating his own works instead of succumbing to sorrow. Cicero's efforts turned a challenging period into a productive one, ensuring the survival of many important philosophical works that are still appreciated today. 8. Learn from your mistakes. Cicero believed that failures are a natural part of life, but it's important to learn from them and avoid making the same mistakes repeatedly. Making mistakes is common and inevitable. Whether it's falling in love with the wrong person, failing to achieve a goal, or making a wrong decision, it's all part of the learning process. Instead of fearing mistakes, focus on learning from them. Reflect on what you can learn from each situation. This is the core principle of philosophy. 9. Trust yourself. Among the many Stoic philosophers, few have been as inspiring as Portia, the daughter of the towering Stoic, Cato the Younger. Introduced to Stoicism as a child, Portia dedicated herself to this philosophy with unwavering resolve, even amidst personal tragedies. Despite the death of her husband during Rome's civil war, the fall of the cherished republic, and the loss of her first child, Portia remained steadfast. Plutarch notes that Portia lacked neither prudence nor courage. She picked up the pieces of her shattered life and eventually remarried Brutus. As a perceptive wife, she quickly sensed her husband was planning something significant in 44 BC, though she did not know what. Rather than demanding an explanation, Portia chose to demonstrate her trustworthiness and fortitude. Plutarch recounts that she took a small knife and stabbed herself in the thigh, testing her endurance to pain. When Brutus returned home, she confronted him, saying, Brutus, I am Cato's daughter, and I came into your house not as a concubine to share your bed and board, but as a partner in your joys and troubles. You are faultless as a husband. But how can I show you my service if I am to share neither your suffering nor anxiety, which craves a loyal confidant? Women's nature is thought too weak to endure a secret, but good rearing and excellent companionship have strengthened my character. It is my happy lot to be both the daughter of Cato and the wife of Brutus. Before this, I had less confidence in my advantages but now I know I am superior even to pain. Moved by her words, 
Brutus revealed his plot to assassinate Julius Caesar and committed to proving himself worthy of her courage. On the Ides of March, Brutus and the conspirators attacked Caesar with a ferocity that astonished both their victim and themselves. Historians tell us that Portia was out of her mind with worry, yet she remained strong, awaiting her husband's return. Following the assassination, civil war ensued, and Portia and Brutus were separated. As Brutus left, he realized he was leaving behind not a Penelope, but a warrior and conspirator, more than his equal. That's all I have for today. I hope you like the content. By following these principles, I believe anyone can be a true badass and a stoic. Epictetus asserted that philosophy is not an abstract concept, but a practice to be engaged in constantly. He believed it should be discussed, written about, read, and explored with others. For the past five years, I have written a daily email about stoic philosophy, meeting fellow practitioners and internalizing these ideas in ways I never imagined. Philosophy should not be confined to dusty old books, it is a constant process. If you like this video, I invite you to subscribe our channel and join our membership for more such video. Till then, stay stoic. See you in the next video.